Hello. God bless you all. This is Pastor Kurt, and we sure miss our Harvest Time congregation. And this is also to the congregation at large, that we're all together, and we're in the boat with Jesus, and that's what he wants us to know. But we do miss uh, meeting together corporately, and we know that this is only for a short season. And this season is a time of growth. It's a time for us to press into the kingdom of God and to realize that Jesus wants us to learn some things. And right before the passage that I'm going to read from Luke chapter 8, Jesus had uh, confronted a group of people and he said, Who are my mother and my brother and sisters? He said, Those who hear the word of God and do it. So there's the hearing and there's the doing. And uh, apparently through this virus, and we're praying, we're praying for some Assembly of God uh, leaders that uh, Greg Mundus, and we're praying for his um, healing and restoration. Uh, this is touching many people, and it's very serious to us. Uh, it is unprecedented that our churches are closed, um, you know, but it's also um, the bars are closed, and uh, sporting events are closed, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the liquor store is still open, and uh, but we have the new wine of the Holy Spirit and the keeping power of Jesus, and apparently he wants us all to press in. And in this passage I'm going to read from Luke chapter 8, uh, verse 22 uh, onward, it says, Now it happened on a certain day that he got into the boat with his disciples, and he said to them, let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake. And they were filling with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him. And they uh, awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they, and they ceased. And there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Now, this is a storm, and we have to get through it. We're going to get to the other side, most assuredly. First of all, Jesus was in the boat. And he got to the other side. He lived. He, he preached the gospel. He died on a cross. He rose from the grave. He's on the throne. He got on the other side. Some of us have uh, mothers or fathers or grandparents that live for Christ, and they got on the other side. You and I are going to get on the other side. We're going to get the victory because Jesus has assured us of that victory. You know, I have a... Uh, interesting testimony of how when when we launched out into the mission field in 1987 to go and work in Amsterdam, Holland, we left the United States. We raised funds uh, the best we could in our independent uh, Pentecostal uh, movement we were in, but we had uh, $525 that uh, that was assured to us when we got to the mission field. And we had sold everything, gave everything away to get there. Now, when we arrived in September of 1987, there was one of the biggest crashes in Wall Street is in 1987, similar to what's going on today. But there is a sense of humor to this, that we were so caught up in the mission of winning souls and, and planting churches and obeying God and 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 thriving in the gospel that we didn't even know there was a worldwide crash. We were just consumed with the mission. And, of course, we, we are aware that the stock market is reeling. But isn't it interesting how um, a bailout is coming? Uh, it looks like they're, gonna, they're still negotiating, but they're going to come up with a bailout. And the disciples were in the boat, and they were bailing out the water. They were bailing out the water. Uh, but what, what's going on in your, in your world? I know it's, it's confining. Uh, there was a funny video of 
this man and he was washing his hands and then he touched uh, he touched the doorknob and he had to wash his hands and then he, he you know he touched another thing he had to wash his hands and he got all in a frenzy so don't get in a frenzy wash your hands uh, what is Jesus teaching us in the boat uh, they were most concerned because he they thought he was sleeping they thought he didn't care and but Jesus always cares he cares for us and he's going to bring us back together this is Lent this is that season where we're thinking about Jesus we're coming up to Easter and we're hoping we can all be together I know President Trump is hoping uh, the churches we can all be together on Easter Sunday we don't know if that's going to happen but this is a blessing that we can be here through through Facebook through YouTube and and communicate but I just want you to know how much uh, we love our congregation. We're praying for you. We're calling you. We're we're helping out with with goods and things that we can do as a church. We're rallying together. Uh, families are rallying together. You know this is a beautiful time. Seriously, I know it's there's extra tension, but parents get to be more with their children. And guess who can teach their children the best? The parents. Or a grandparent and this is a time to maybe try out some homeschooling this is this is a time to play more board games and be creative and go out and take a walk don't be afraid God is with you and this is a time that we need to spend more time in prayer uh, it's good to do uh, some fasting and praying for our nation and the cure for this coronavirus but we're gonna get through and God wants us to enlarge ourselves, have a greater capacity. The storm, they're in a little boat. Some of you are in your house. You feel like you're in a little boat. You're in a confined place. But enlarge yourself through prayer and praise and worship. Worship God. Turn up the worship and sing some songs and shake off those heavy bands and lift up those holy hands. And when we all come together, uh, we, we're going to pull some new people in with us, that, that some neighbors we've been praying with. Hey, I got to talk to my cousin on the other side of the nation, and we prayed together, and he got the baptism of fire. Amen. He spoke in tongues. The hair was standing up on, uh, on his arm. Glory to God. There's people that need the fire. They need to see Christ within us. He's in our heart. And isn't it something, and I'm going to conclude with this. Isn't it something, he rebuked them, he said, where is your faith? In other words, it's not, it's not like, like you, you don't have faith. He said, you have faith. You have to dig it out. The faith is in the word. The faith is in you. Christ is within you to grasp this moment. And, and say those prayers of protection, those prayers of Psalm 91. He's with us. Put the blood of Jesus over your life when you go out, over your loved ones. Pray for those who are sick. Remember this, that already since the beginning of the new year, 23,000 Americans have died from the common flu and 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 yet we're concerned about the coronavirus and then i believe we've lost now um you know maybe 400 americans it's very sad but we have to keep things in proportion here jesus is coming back he's coming back for his bride this is uh, this is a, is a very um time where we we are kind of experiencing some of the power of government the power of things that can happen but remember this jesus is in the boat jesus is coming back again and we're in the ark of god in the, in faith and we're praying for you you i hope you're praying for us we're praying together we're going to all come back together and, and, and those of you that are out there in the congregation at large, you're going to come back together. You're going to come back into your church. And, but you're going to come back with more faith and more love and, and rejoicing that you had this time, that we had this time to enlarge our hearts, our love 
our love for Christ, our love for our family, our love for our church. So God bless you all uh, and have a, a wonderful day.